our people and <laughs> and, and teach more people because that's what I'm trying to do. And, and that, that you get a lot from that, don't you? I've saved 15 grand. People want to know how. I spent it all when I was in Australia. So I love this idea of paying yourself first towards your financial goals, savings, investments, your emergency fund, and spend what's left after that. Welcome back to my channel. Before we begin today's podcast, I'd like to say a big thank you to Casita Properties, the UK leading property company when it comes to discrete off-market buy-to-let sales. And today, I'm delighted to welcome Laura and more to, well, the new studio, okay. the new setup. So it's exciting that we're at the, uh, the new setup today. Money and Mindset Coach. Laura, welcome and please tell us a little bit about you. Thank you for having me. Um, so yeah, money and mindset coach. So my main focus is on helping people to like heal their relationship with money. So I'm very focused on like how money is very emotional and like makes us feel things. And um, yeah, I guess I work a lot like one-to-one -one with people, but I also started through like Instagram and like financial education and stuff like that. And it led me to the world of like financial coaching. It's really cool. I, I'm very fascinated by money. I love everything to do with money managing. How did you get into it? Because not everyone enjoys it. It can actually be quite a bit of a boring topic <laughs> and yeah. sort of something to be involved in. It's not everyone's cup of tea. How did you get involved in it and actually enjoy it? So it is, it comes from my personal experience. So basically, if we rewind back like 10 years ago, um, I didn't want to go to university. I was like, no, I'm going to be an actress. Like I wanted to be Kate Winslet in Titanic 2. <laughs> like I was ready. And so I wanted to go to drama school and it's like £15,000 a year. Now you can get it paid for, but at the time I would have had to fund it myself. Don't come from a family with loads of money. So I was like, right, I've got to make 15 grand so I ended up getting a full-time job and I was you know whilst my friends were at university and stuff I was working on computers working on spreadsheets and started managing my own money I saved 15 grand in three years and then basically before I went to drama school two of my best friends were like we're gonna go traveling do you want to come with and I was like uh yeah I do <laughs> so deferred my place but obviously where I then went traveling at the drop of a hat didn't really work whilst I was there I was in Australia and Thailand for like seven months everyone was like how have you just done that like you, you did did you not save and I was like well yeah I had 15,000 pounds saved and obviously that sparked the interest and this was a couple of years ago when I then set up my blog set up my Instagram and just sort of like started sharing what I'd done how I saved the 15 grand how I manage my money you know um and there was just loads of interest around it so it kind of just went from there really yeah organically nice. organic I mean I think what happened what happened during like COVID I think it woke like a lot of people up yeah. when it comes to finance and I'm very much like yourself. I love to know where the money's going. I'm, I love to know how I can save more money, how I can invest better. And obviously education is like a huge part of it, you know, to keep learning, to keep finding out like new ways of working. You know, kind of what's the, what is the goal when, for, for you when it comes to sort of being involved in finance? You know, is it to retire early? Like what, what is the goal of what you're doing right now? Um, I think the biggest goal, I always knew that I wanted to be, once I decided I didn't want to act full time, I had loads of actor friends and I was like, that is not the lifestyle for me. Um, I knew that I wanted to be in a career where I was really helping people. So obviously this kind of happened organically. So with like the career side of it, I'm really passionate about helping people to manage their money and know that money is for them and, you know, all of that. But I guess for me personally, it's not necessarily to retire early, but it's to know that I have the option. Um, and, to, you know, I came from a family that didn't, that didn't have any money didn't have you know I've got three brothers and sisters it was always a problem and I think that the motivation I guess is away from that like I don't you know no shade to my mum or dad um but like I want a different lifestyle for me and when I hopefully have a family um but I don't necessarily need to retire at 40 and be lying on a beach I kind of still want to be working but I want to build a business where I'm like love it so much I don't really want to not not work do you know what I mean oh yeah it always comes back to that whole it's options isn't yeah it? like when you're savvy with money and you've made good decisions it gives you the option to do other things and just yeah. be a little bit more comfortable. And that's what I found is obviously you touched on a very good point is that you've got to have a reason why and like having a family and stuff like that, you know, having my son was a huge drive to be um, more financially educated, you know, create a better situation. I sort of can relate in the sense that I came from a family that didn't have a lot of money 
when me and my sister were growing up, you know, it was a rarity to go out and that was fish and chips. You know, and when we did, obviously, you know, you like really appreciate it. So it's nice to be able to create these pots, make better decisions. Mm -hmm. And I think, well, isn't it crazy? Let's actually just start with, isn't it crazy that we're in 2022 and we're not teaching it in school? <laughs> we all know why, Yeah. you know, to go along with the system. But I think it's great that, you know, I watch a lot of your stuff that you're trying to empower people and <laughs> <laughs> and, and teach more people because that's what I'm trying to do. And, and that, that you get a lot from that, don't you? Yeah, and I think, like, it's really weird because – I've been now on doing it on Instagram for like three years maybe and it's changed so much like you know I got furloughed over the pandemic which was great in the way of I was still being paid and then I could start doing all of this but the social media and all of that has changed a lot so getting educated you know you've got to move with the platforms and stuff which is why I love TikTok it's all new and, it's, and I love little videos but it's more the aim of like sometimes and I don't know if you find this the knowledge that we have that seems so basic to us is actually not for other people and sometimes you find yourself sharing tips that can be so small but can be so impactful for some people and you're like wow the impact of it not being taught in school unless you've got really financially literate parents or guardians where do you get that information from you have to have the motivation inside of you to go pick up a book to go and we've got all this knowledge like access to knowledge youtube podcasts but you have to know what you're looking for and i think that that even just being someone like creating free content helping with that financial element can have such a big impact on people's lives and i just think that i don't know that that motivates me a lot that's a really good point actually i think when you stop and think even the basics of like what we would talk about and you would think to us that would be just like a really basic thing to do especially with like saving you know yeah when you hear the word saving nothing spectacular about it. it doesn't seem overly exciting but actually so many people don't know how to you know, save and, and how much to save. And I think actually, if we actually stop and think about how many people we could help, yeah. um, that, that's a really good point. I mean, I did a video about the amount of bank accounts that I have, and I've got 20 bank accounts and they all serve a different purpose. Wow. And I had so many people comment on that YouTube video saying, you know, I didn't realize you could have that many, you know, I've yeah. only got one. And it's, it's crazy because like you say, unless you're motivated yeah. to go out and learn it or your parents, are already in that position you, you actually don't know where to begin so I think yeah you know hopefully things that we're doing now like podcasts like this YouTube uh, other resources they are going to help people so what's kind of like at the moment the top tips that you're giving out like conversations that you're having all the time thinking you know this is something like needs to be addressed mm. so for me like I found myself sharing a lot about saving because naturally what happened is I've saved 15 grand people want to know how I spent it all when I was in Australia I was like I'm having the best time, <laughs> spent it all, came home, decided I wanted to move to London, saved another 20 grand. So that like built up this, this kind of idea of like, um, oh, Laura's like the saving queen. She knows how to do it. So that was a lot. I give a lot of tips on that. And I always say like one of my favorite tips is about like paying yourself first. So like naturally what happens is people get their money in. They don't always budget. They just spend and they go, I'm just going to save what's left over. And from a mindset point of view, your brain is going to spend what's there, especially if you don't actually have a goal what you're saving for. And you're like, oh, I just put some money away. That's why you get to the end of the month and go, I actually don't know where all my money's gone. So I love this idea of paying yourself first towards your financial goals, savings, investments, your emergency fund, and spend what's left after that. Because then that way you have the balance of being able to enjoy your money while still preparing for the future. And I think, I mean, that 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 falls into the tip of saving, but also general money management. And like, I think what happens as well in personal finance education is spending seems to be the thing that people just get told cut back restrict don't do this don't do that but I think spending is really important spending in alignment with your values and with your financial goals and I think when you look at that part you can save pay yourself first save to what you're saving for and then actually feel good about where you're spending your money yeah. um because I find that a lot of like my community they talk a lot about like feeling guilty for spending because they're like oh I should be saving for this and with obviously the cost of living going through the roof at the moment it's like there's no perfect way to manage your money you kind of have to build up these habits first yeah do you know what I mean yeah I think one thing which always surprises me is when I ask the question when people start talking to me about money and, and how I manage it and what I do with it and we go back to the basics of like savings having multiple accounts with different banks or building societies and then getting onto the topic of setting up standing orders I'm yeah. amazed all the time at the amount of people that do not have standing orders set up 
And like you say, you know, for me, when the money drops in, is that if you've got standing orders, you don't have to think yeah. about it. And you go into this process of paying yourself first, which is so important. And then you must make sure that you're putting aside for your tax or whatever your circumstances is. And and then having these other pots like fund money and savings mm. and investing accounts. And it just, it does, it, I'm gobsmacked the amount of people that almost question their own spending, mm. don't know where their money's gone, but yet they haven't sort of taken like basic steps just to set up a standing order. Yeah, And I, I think, I think we're in a world where, because everything's so like instant, yeah. you can open up an app. It looks like everyone's making a lot of money on <laughs> NFTs, cryptos. Yeah. Everyone's quite influential. Do you find yeah. that a lot of people that you talk to have almost been like a little bit brainwashed and you've got to bring them back to the basics? Sometimes. I think the problem with social, like social media can be amazing. I've been able to reach so many people, and I'm sure you have, like to help. But I do get people come to me and be like oh I just really want to make some money now and I'm like well that's not always how it works yeah. <laughs> you know we've got like because I'm a big believer of how you manage 10 pounds is how you manage 10,000 and like getting these basics in and I think that what happens is I guess where I have to do some like unlearning is around this idea that you the, the more money you have just the better but it's like that's not always the case because if you're not managing it in a way that's serving you and optimizing you know, your savings and investments. It doesn't matter how much you're making. And I think that it that's a combination of A, being able to see the day trading, the, you know, this lavish lifestyle that people think they can get from not much work. Yeah. And also like um, consumer spending and like this idea. I mean, we're so constantly sold to, aren't we? On Instagram, we're getting served ads. Everywhere you go, there's an ad for something telling you that you're not good enough and you need to buy something new. So therefore, if you haven't been taught these basic things, there's a lot of like, oh, I want it all now. Like I want to buy all the things and I want to be really rich and I want to not have to work much. And it's like, well, you don't actually get to do all of that. You actually do have to put some work in. Yeah. Um, That's yeah. the thing though. It's hard work, isn't it? Like I think you hit the nail on the head. Like we have so much marketing in front of our face that it looks like everything's done overnight. And there are a lot of influential people that are out there watching and really being sucked into it. And it's funny, I always go back to this, but anyone that I know that has like real wealth, I, you know, I can easily say that they're all 40s, mm. 40s, 50s and 60s. And it's taken that amount of time. And don't get me wrong, there are ways to do it. I think, I do think there are quicker ways of doing it. There isn't the, we're not in the industrial age anymore. Yeah. There are ways to do it slightly quicker, slightly quicker, but hard work and just like basics of yeah. saving, moving your I mean, you just said it, but I also say like every penny is a prisoner rather than every pound. And, you know, I'll even say to people sort of about like saving change. So, I mean, do you even like save change? Like how far does it go like with saving your money? Um, my The way I've like saved has really changed over the years. Like when I first got a job, so when I was 19 and I had that full-time job, I would have this spreadsheet every single penny would be tracked. Like I'd go to the shop and buy something and I'd put it in this little tracker and I'd be like, yeah, I just went to Boots and spent £3.31. You know, like it was everything. Yeah. That allowed me, obviously I was on a lower, much lower salary. Um, and, you know, because one thing what happened is people assume that because I saved this 15 grand that it was daddy's money or that I came from a privileged family. I was like, no, I had no help. And I was on like a 12 grand salary, you know, for those couple of years. I was just like obsessed. However, that now is too restrictive for me, but that helped me lay the foundation of understanding how easy it is to spend your money and for it to disappear. So now I've sort of done that. I do do like saving up my change and stuff like that because I usually do my spending on Monzo. And um, so like I just do that. But with my saving, I focus more on like, okay, I've got these goals. What, you know paying myself first, moving them into different pots and stuff like that, focusing on investing. But it's more, I guess, relaxed than it used to be yeah. because I want to enjoy my money a bit more right now because I know I've got those habits. Yeah. Um, like the saving the change thing I do do, but then I will use that as like, okay, that's going to go towards something fun or that's going to go my fun money. Um, but my money management changes. But that, I think that's because I like – because I'm learning so much about personal finance always for myself to give to my followers, I'm then like, oh, I might try that. So I'm always still learning. I don't think I've got it nailed. Yeah, I like trying new things as well. Yeah. And that, that's another really important, important point is continuously learning because like new things are always coming up. And I do believe that if you're not learning about something or educating yourself, you will get left behind because things are changing so quick. Yeah. I think also the biggest thing to become really efficient and a great saver and someone who can become 
wealthy is being quite content with who you are. I mm. think if you can let go of this whole sort of having to compete with people, you know, how many people do you know? I mean, I know a lot that left school and as soon as they got their paycheck, they were like, right, I'm going to go get the car and finance yeah. just so I can go down the beach <laughs> when it's summer and show people that I have this car. And But it's not real wealth. It's just, it's, it's showcasing. And I think that comes from being content, like being comfortable in yourself, you know, just dossing about in some jeans and some sliders <laughs> until you're wealthy. I don't think a lot of people are happy to yeah. kind of just walk about their day in joggers. They, they want to look like the part. Yeah, I think that now this kind of like leads into like a lot of the mindset work that I do. And so when it comes to like savings, like first of all, having a savings mindset. But I think financial goals are so, so important because what they allow you to do is let's say your goal is you want to travel. That idea of you traveling, you can visualize yourself on a beach in Mexico, you know, wherever it is, with a cocktail, doing whatever you want. When you hold that vision so strong of what that future you is going to be doing, that allows you to prioritize the way that you spend your money. If you don't have a vision, even if the vision changes, that's okay. You end up focusing so much on what's happening now and what you don't have, as opposed to so being like, oh, I want everything now. I need a new clothes. I need new cars. Whereas if you go, oh, actually, yeah, I've got enough to be having a nice time I can focus I can be grateful for what I've got now knowing that what I'm doing is working hard towards having that bigger thing that I want because yeah. I always used to say like if you get all caught up in spending your money now and having the latest things for 10 years like 10 years down the line one of your friends you know your friends have got houses one of them runs their own business and works three days a week but you're still going to be living at home with no stamps on your passport you know like what in some cool clothes and a car that is now degraded yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. That, that, that is the thing though isn't it like people want to live in the here and now and then i think a lot of people justify i hear this all the time and i think okay i'll let you crack on is that well you only live once I yeah don't be here tomorrow. yeah well you know i don't really i don't buy into the whole you know yolo thing because the likelihood is you will live longer than tomorrow yeah <laughs> and if you're not there tomorrow you're not going to care anyway so I'd rather plan and, but that's why you have a fun budget. Like that's mm -hmm. why you set aside fun money because that's the money that you can justify to enjoy. And I think where things are becoming so expensive is that I, if, I think if we could see 30 years in the future, what our health would be like, like some mm -hmm. of us aren't going to be healthy. Mm -hmm. Some of us are going to be, have issues and stuff like that. And therefore you will need to pay for like care and stuff like that. And I, I think that's too far in the future for a lot of people to stop and think, okay, would I need funds to actually take care of myself? Because if I haven't got kids, who's looking after me? And and yeah, it's a little bit morbid. And why would you think like that? But that is a reality. Like that could be. So it's better to plan for it. And yeah. It. I think that um, the mindset of YOLO can be really damaging. Mm. Um, it's like the whole treat yourself. It's like, well, yeah, okay, treat yourself, but budget for it. Yeah. I think the thing that, so it's the, the view of delayed versus instant gratification. I think people in modern day society struggle with delayed gratification. They just want everything now because they're being sold to it. And now with buy now pay later schemes, it is the idea if you can have everything you want now without even needing to pay for it and having to deal with like the consequences of spending that money. And the, I think the same kind of plays in like with investing and pensions, like a lot of people I speak to, they want to make money, they want to be wealthy, but they don't understand that it, they they view it as too big of a sacrifice right now yeah. when without realizing like you say hopefully you're gonna live for like till you're 80 90 um you know the living age is only going up yeah. um but it feels so far in the future that people go eh, that's like tomorrow's problem yeah and then years roll like pass and then it's like oh crap well, <laughs> i haven't we're, actually we're done what i need to do we're in a life now on social media where you know and, and quote everyone in their mid-20s is a millionaire yeah and, and everyone's putting out I mean, we were having a discussion off of camera, uh, me and Paul, about, you know, like a certain individual claiming that, you know, sort of like making X amount of money and stuff like this. And there's there's a little part of me that thinks, well, you know, show the bank statement. Because mm. the problem is that's quite damaging for people to look at that, yeah. who are the same age as you, who are working really hard, who are trying to do more, who, who are trying to start a business, start a side hustle. And you're throwing figures out there, which in my opinion, probably aren't true. If they are gross, what's your tax situation? How much tax are you paying? So like there's a so lot many of, questions. There's so many questions and 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 wealth whispers. Like wealth, mm. real wealth is actually quiet. It's not loud, it's not bullshit. Certainly from the network that I know. So 
when I see people like that, I think it's not damaging me, but there are a lot of people who are younger or looking up and thinking, if I get to your age and I'm not earning the same yeah. or more, I've failed. And then that's damaging. Yeah. And I think that that like you can say to people, okay, you want that amount of money. So like the people who are showing it all, the people who are looking at it, they're going, oh my God, I want that. Okay. Why? Why do you want that? Yeah. Why do you want to be a millionaire? Because I used to say all the time, oh my God, I'm going to be a millionaire. I want to be a millionaire. When I started doing my coaching program, it really made me like connect to like my why. Why do I want that money? Well, I still want that money, but it's, I now understand it's not the money I want. It's the freedom I want that that money gives me. So it's asking yourself, why do you want money? What is it for? Is it that, you know, it could be anything. It's, it, it links into your values. I think the problem is that when people want money for money's sake to just buy a load of things and look like, they're rich, they're never happy because it's never enough. Yeah. Whereas when you can really connect with your why, you realize that the number isn't as important, it's more the lifestyle, mm. whatever that is to you. But we're not taught to connect that emotional mindset, lifestyle part of it, it's just like, yeah. you know, oh, I wanna be wealthy because that's what we see everybody doing. Yeah. And it seems like an easy life. <laughs> one of, uh, a good friend of mine, and it's probably one of my favorite stories, is that Tyler, you've met him, is that he came from a very, very poor background single mother lived in a rough part of London and ended up building a business you know in excess of 200 million a year has done extremely well is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet and the only reason he's driven himself to be able to be so successful financially and, and one of the nicest guys by the way is the fear of being broke because he came from nothing mm. and he never wants to be in that situation again he never wants his children to ever mm. go through what he went through it's not the money He's got yeah. all the money in the world. He's had every car you can imagine. Um, and he is absolutely set. But his drive to make more money is purely about his remembrance of that, that, that fear and that feeling of being broke. And that's your why. And so many people, it's just the paper. It's the money. Yeah. And I think that there's, um, you have to think about what your financial motivator is. And usually when it, with motivation, you're either motivated away from pain or towards pleasure. Now, if, when you're motivated away from pain, so for example, not wanting to be in the same situation, it's a great way to get you motivated at the start because you're like, I don't want, I don't want this anymore. I don't want that. As the pain, as you get closer to your goal and the pain starts to disappear, you run the risk of falling into self-sabotaging behaviors spending your money again thinking oh, I'm all right and dipping back towards the painful place so you have to kind of have the combination away from the pain but what's the pleasure that you're going towards so in his instance it's that he doesn't ever want that again but he wants to be able to give that to his children so it's like the combination I think people it's good to sit down and think about that and I run like a lot of workshops of like money mindset stuff and sometimes I get people to ask some questions about like money in their childhood and how money actually makes them feel and the phrases that they're using about money because it's so easy people are like oh my god I'm so poor at the moment and oh my god I'm language, the language yeah but they never connect like the feeling to it and it's always just so dissociated it's like money's a physical thing it's numbers it's spreadsheets it's making money and the emotion gets left out of it but actually the emotion is like well, your money mindset is like the foundation to your like financial well-being and to making money. Yeah. And I think that when people start to do that work as well, I think that can have a big impact. Absolutely. A, a point you touched on there is the whole like education and language side of it. That also changes you. Like one thing I've noticed, and I always say this, I've said it multiple times, but you know, 10 years ago, I would speak different to the way that I speak now. And mm -hmm. it's actually funny because I've had it on Instagram, I've had it on TikTok, and I've had it on YouTube, is that people have actually watched some of my videos and obviously they've got time to spend. But they've actually <laughs> left a comment going, oh, well, he's a silver spoon. I don't know about you. I don't look like silver spoon. <laughs> my history is not silver spoon by any means, but my language has changed yeah. because of the people that I work work around and and also where I want to go. Mm. And, and that's a really big part is the mindset, the language and the yeah. way you hold yourself and the different hats you put on to learn from people who have been there and done it. As we sort of come to a close, what kind of side hustles are realistic in your eyes like in today's age like what what kind of things or conversations would you have for someone who might be watching this thinking okay i'm gonna get my saving in order you know my, my budget in but what kind of side hustles or money making tips do you sort of talk about i think the ones that i'm i try not to give too many unrealistic ones i think the problem with like because technically my business started out as a side hustle now it's a main hustle i turned it into business because that's what i wanted but it started out as blogging and Instagram. Now, you know, many, many years ago, 
especially women, you couldn't just go and open up a business bank account and start a business. You needed capital. Now you can literally get an email address, open up an Instagram, start posting, get brand deals. Yes, it's a lot of hard work, but it's more accessible. That is a viable route, but it takes work. You know, any anything online, selling digital products, e-courses, great. But to be able to do that, you still have to build a following and build an audience. So it's like, if you do want to set up a side hustle, you still kind of have to take into account the amount of work it takes. But anything online, I think is great. Like, like the ones I said, like selling products, doing courses, brand deals, like essentially being an influencer. Um, but I also do focus a lot about like negotiating pay rises. I think that, you know, a lot of my audience is women are women is women. (laughs) Um, and we, you know, it's important to make sure you're being paid what you're worth. That's easier though, in jobs where you have the ability to ask for pay rises, you know, NHS workers and people like that, they don't have that opportunity and they might need to look at side hustles. Um, but at the flip side of that, I think you've also got to make sure that I think we're so focused on making more money that every single fun thing and hobby you have ends up turning into a money making thing. And that's, capitalism at its finest um but yeah i think if you do want to start making more money at online selling courses and yeah. um running instagrams and tiktoks and stuff like that yeah I think best. off the back of that i think education is probably going to be your biggest earner because again like you know i'm totally self-taught in terms of i would say 90 percent or 85 percent of <laughs> everything that i know is all through audible oh. like and i'm proud to say literally audible love that uh, i've done something like two months like 27 days and like 16 hours and you know whatever yeah. seconds and minutes but you know and that has taught me so much yeah but I was I was never driven at school but certainly you know leaving is that I really motivated myself so I think if you can really educate yourself and become someone of value yeah eventually when you're in a position like you know branding and stuff like that then you could look at digital products and stuff like yeah. that and start with these side hustles yeah. uh Laura it's been amazing where can people go to connect with you and reach out um, I'm on all the platforms. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. I'm also on Twitter. I'm also on Pinterest. <laughs> um, everything actually. Yeah. So literally it's just, uh, so my Instagram is Laura underscore Ann underscore more, but I'm Laura Ann more pretty much everything. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on to the channel. Thank you for and having me. And everyone that watched up until this point, thanks. And we will see you all very soon.